Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. It's National New Identity Day. Tony, have you ever thought about changing your identity? Who's Tony? Well, clearly not you. What do you think? I think what do you think, seriously? What do you that think? That you wanted to look like this in high school. Yeah, I probably did. Except that you had the big red afro. Don't, Why don't you have a red afro wig? Don't you think I look a little bit like Owen Wilson? Just a little bit like a Owen little, Wilson, yeah. right? That's, that's not I'm not as young, I'm not as athletic, but I look a little bit, a little bit like Owen Wilson. You're going to do the show in that? Really? Yep. Welcome to PTI, boys rapid. and girls. In today's episode, the Cavs drop their GM. Bill Jackson floats Kristaps Porzingis, and Jerry West hopes to land LeBron. Big news. But we begin today with the frenzy around Paul George, which gets wilder by the hour. Ramona Shelburne and Mark Stein reported today that the Pacers and Lakers are engaged in trade discussions. Sources say the Lakers are adamant they will not part with a number two pick in Thursday's draft. But other sources say this is precisely what the Pacers want. Wilbon, do you see a deal getting done? Yes, as long as it does not involve the number two overall pick in Why? the draft. Why? Because the Pacers, Tony, they don't have as much leverage as it might seem. Paul George has essentially announced, I'm going to Los Angeles That's for right. the Lakers next year. That's right. Okay, so that means somebody has to come in and offer you something that is good enough, but that somebody needs to be the Lakers because that's the end destination. So Cleveland can offer Kevin Love, whatever it means, he can still be a free agent, Paul George, and say, I'm still going to the Lakers. So most teams aren't going to go with that. Cleveland could because they can say, we only care for one more year anyway. That's how long LeBron's going to be here. Right. But the Lakers still have the leverage and a deal with Russell, D'Angelo Russell at the heart of it, a multiplayer deal and a second first round pick, not the number two overall but the number 28 ought to satisfy Indiana instead of letting Paul George walk next June. Let, let me go to this, though. And, and I understand that. I understand Paul George wants to play with the Lakers, and he will sign with the Lakers. So it's a larger deal with the Lakers than with anybody else. And I understand all that. But what we see in, in the era of one and dones, and we talked about this yesterday, is that you're not actually sure how good somebody is. They yeah. played maybe 30 games in college. They're not, their heart may not be in it because they know they're going to the NBA. Then they have to compete against real men, and then they have to play 80 or something games. W why wouldn't you give up that number two pick a for question. a guy in the middle of his prime who can help you? One, because you don't have to. Because, again, I just outlined that Indiana has some pressure on it. Not all the pressure, but some. And the other thing, Tony, is this draft might actually be the exception. You know I agree with everything you said about kids coming in yep. who aren't prepared to play. You know I agree with that. But this might be the exception in terms of the kids at the top of this draft. This Just this year. That, I ain't giving that pick okay. up. We move now to the shakeup in Cleveland. General Manager David Griffin has been let go. This had been talked about for months. But LeBron James is telling people that he was not consulted. And therein lies the rub, because if LeBron James is further upset with Cleveland owner Dan Gilbert, as is being reported, that adds another log to the fire that leads to LeBron leaving Cleveland after next season. Wilbon, what does this mean for the future of the Cavaliers? Tony, it's really uncertain. I mean, this is the offseason in which you need a veteran GM out there to assess and deal with the intricacies of all of this and then make the deal. David Griffin's done this. He knows how to do this. LeBron has confidence in him. I even suspect Dan Gilbert, while he might have wanted a different thing in terms of his long-term future, has that confidence in Griff as well because he's been a damn good GM. But now you're going to bring somebody in just to, to, to assess these deals and do it on the fly without having intimate knowledge of your style and your organization? It just seems risky to me. There are lots of times when you can fire a general manager. But two days before a draft is not yeah. the right time. The Washington Redskins did this with Scott McLuhan. And they walked into the draft with a bunch of people that had prepared some stuff, but nobody who really had the authority to know what direction is this team going in. And I think that was a disaster for them. This guy, presumably Griffin, is working on trying to get Paul George or trying to get Jimmy But Who makes that deal now? Does the owner make that deal now? So I don't, I mean... There's a lot of things today that we have talked about and we're going to talk about that I actually don't understand. This does not seem to make sense to me. And it's, I know LeBron hates Dan Gilbert. I, I, I'll, say that, I'll say this time and time again. LeBron already left Cleveland once, and he already left Miami <laughs> once, again. and he'll leave Cleveland again. Well, but he's a practical man. If David Griffin could have gotten a couple of players yes, around him where they thought they could be Golden State. You're staying home. Yes. You consider that. Yes. And LeBron does respect David Griffin. Now, the question is... 
both of them, of course, looked at Dan Gilbert. They've seen Dan Gilbert want to do crazy things in the past. Somebody talked him off the ledge from doing crazy things. Well, I don't know things. that this is crazy. I know well, the guy well, pays more luxury tax than anybody in the world. And, and you know what, Tony? Suppose one of the things, just suppose, one of the things that Dan Gilbert wants is to blow this up and trade LeBron for a bunch of players okay. and picks and things. You know what? So that LeBron doesn't just walk Fine. and he gets nothing. You know what? Fine, because he's, he's got the championship. If, and Fine. I don't know this. I'm guessing now. Fine. If Griff would say to this, I'm not going to be the guy who runs LeBron James out of town. I'm not going to be known for that. And you know what happens after that? Somebody goes, you're fired. Okay, fine. But you know okay. what? David Griffin's reputation is solid plus. Okay. He'll get a new gig yeah. in about a minute and a half if he wants. We'll see. Oh, Tony, you know we haven't had in a few days. No. Knicks news, baby. God help us. Yahoo is reporting the Knickerbockers aren't ruling out the possibility of trading the unicorn, Chris Porzingis. In fact, the report says the club has been fielding calls from other teams. There's a fight between Porzingis and the Knicks that dates back to the end of the regular season when he skipped his season-ending interview, that thing's usually mandatory, to go bike riding in Central Park. Surely you can identify with that, Tony. The two sides haven't talked since. Tony, I can just feel the anger rising up inside you now. Pretty much. Could you understand on any level the team of your youth making that move? I don't know how serious a fracture there is between management and Porzingis. You don't skip an exit interview, and you certainly don't do a showy thing like bicycle through Central Park when you're supposed <laughs> to do it. It may be that that is a red flag that the Knicks can't deal with. But if you're talking about a player here, he's 21 years old and he's already a veteran. He's going into his third year. Yeah. He's no longer a one-and-done in his first year. That's right. He's 7'3", which the last time I looked, you can't teach. Scorer, shot blocker, defender. He's 18 points a game, seven rebounds a game, and the fifth most per game block. So, n no. Uh, the, the short answer is no. Maybe they're just floating this. I do he's a guy you might – I don't think P Paul George is a guy you can build around. Porzingis might be. I don't understand it, which means the Knicks just might do it. The Knicks do all kinds of things we don't understand. I mean, you from year to year to year, I do. But I also know that if you start reading mock drafts and looking at who it is the Knicks are supposedly interested in, yeah. who they've made contact with in terms of the agent, Laurie Markkinen, uh, a Finnish seven-footer. I've seen him. Okay, so what, he wouldn't be a replacement? You don't well, need Porzingis, both of them. Porzingis, if they drafted him, Porzingis, if you're preparing for the no. possibility of drafting him. But Porzingis him. is at that level now where you're about to become a big star because you're going into your third year. I mean, the market is fine. I, I'm it's just fine. saying, there's two things I don't understand. to replace him well, already, isn't yeah. that just bizarre? I don't know how much of this is posture. I've told you for two years, I have no idea why they kept Carmelo Anthony. No idea. And I have no idea why they would trade this guy. No, I, no, no idea. If you have no idea, this is your team. It is. Yesterday, the Los Angeles Clippers officially introduced Jerry West as their basketball guru. Today, USA Today is speculating that West's big get could be, hello, LeBron James. And that is why West was hired and is being paid $5 million a year by baseline berserker Steve Ballmer. <laughs> He's a billionaire. Wilbon, do you think Jerry West can get LeBron James to come to the Clippers? I think that Jerry West has a better shot of getting him than just about anybody else. They might want to run through Clipper land. I, I think that, remember, we had Jalen Rose on this show about 10 days ago, and Jalen said, Los Angeles, yes, Clippers, no, 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 no. Well, Jerry West may even change his mind, Jalen's mind. He changed the equation. But the first thing he's probably got to do is keep Chris Paul. I mean, if you want LeBron, one of the people that LeBron has said I want to play with before my time is up is Chris Paul. So if you can keep Chris Paul, can Jerry West help do that, keep him running off to San Antonio, that starts a chain in which they yeah. seem viable, Tony. They seem more viable, though perhaps not as viable I'm as the Lakers. You this, that the biggest story in the NBA from the moment he arrived in the NBA has been LeBron James, and it's about 15 years now. And the biggest story right now in the NBA, team aside, because team story is Golden State. Team aside, individual player movement, LeBron James. And not even this year, next year. Right. I mean, you know, that's, right. that's the biggest story because he's the biggest star. Now, the thing you're talking about is this sort of reunion that has been percolating in LeBron's mind for a while. You get me, you get Chris Paul, you get Carmelo Maybe Anthony, Dwayne Wade. you get Dwayne Wade, right. and that looks great. Next year. On paper, it looks great, except every one of them is 50 years old. LeBron's got the mileage of a 75-year-old man at this point, so what they would be doing in two years is competing for fifth place in the Western <laughs> Division. I don't know. Because they're, they're 33, 34, 36, okay. 35. Old people win in the NBA. Young guys don't win anything. People said the Spurs are too guys. old. 
and they would just win. You need a couple of young guys no, no, at that no, point. No, you really don't. Look, I think we're I think we're both convinced that because of the movie and television business, and because of the fact, like everybody else in the NBA, LeBron too owns a house in Los Angeles, <laughs> that that's where he could end up. They could end he, up. He could end up sure. there. But sure. again, we thought only the Lakers were viable. Doesn't in in your mind does Jerry West's yes. presence make them at least? LeBron at least sits to talk to How him. How many times have we talked about the fact that Jerry West, he's, he's the guy. That's right. He's the guy. We like to end this A block with a good And by the way, story. self-admittedly that he's crazy. You watch him on TV, he says, yes, I'm crazy. You got to like that. That's great. You got to like that's that. That's a cool it's thing. It's like Jimmy Pearsall when he said, I'm nuts, and I got the papers to prove right. it. Jerry's, Jerry's not that kind of nuts. We like to end the A block with a good fight story, but we'll settle for a collision at home plate that's causing beef. My man Anthony Rizzo went mini Pete Rose on Padres catcher Austin Hedges in this play last night. Boom! Okay, you can see Rizzo's out, catcher holds onto the ball, but Padres manager Andy Green called it a cheap shot. Joe Madden called it great. Baseball says there is at minimum a violation of the relatively new rule that Rizzo appeared, not to me, to veer off course just a wee bit Interesting and slide, into Hedges. Interesting slide. Knees first. Slide at all, Knees first which after 140 chest. years yeah. a runner can no longer do. Tony first. Is Green right? Is this a cheap shot? It looked to me like Rizzo, who is a great leadoff hitter apparently. Yeah. a thousand, I think. At like 6'4", 235 you know. pounds. It looked to me like he deliberately initiates the contact. It looks to me that he veers a little bit to left. his left. Okay. That's not really a slide. He's plowing into him with his knees. I, so if I had to find fault, I'd find fault with Rizzo. But I think I speak for old people in general when I say that this is the baseball we grew up with, that the most exciting play in all of baseball is the throw to the plate and the collision and the most as the catcher, just like the kickoff in football, yes, the most is. exciting and the most dangerous. Yes. And they want to get rid they of it get, in they football. Want it out. And they got baseball rid of it got in it baseball out. because they say you can't block the plate anymore. Yeah. If I have to find fault, I find fault with Rizzo. Come on, say it. Come on, admit it, you do too. I, I, I saw this in live time last night, and I didn't think Rizzo veered off course. I was watching the game. Veered off course, one step. They yeah. call that a Euro step if Dwayne Wade does what it. crab dribble. And, oh, yeah, crab, crab dribble. dribble for LeBron. Instead, I don't, want to, well, I don't need to find fault. Nobody was injured, which, which, and by the way, that's the main thing. Here, nobody got hurt. Armor. Why don't you just take your IV uh, thing and just hold it up <laughs> over your head? Because what's great about this is both managers would reverse their positions if the, if they other, guy. the other team. Let's take a break. You know, I mean, Kyle Gasol really opt out of his $16 million with the Spurs. Kind of crazy. Conor McGregor's latest taunt of Floyd Mayweather. Wait till you see this. It's not really that subtle. It's not subtle at all. I'm going to take the Ivy you like home. this? Do you like this? Do you like the hair? Seriously. I'm, I'm growing your I don't like any it. hair. Pardon the interruption is presented by Guinness Blonde American Lager. Here's to a more refreshing summer. Please drink responsibly. Part of happy hour. Welcome back to Pardon the Interruption. Presented by Guinness Blonde American Lager. Part of happy hour. It's time for something or nothing, the game that asks so little of us, no matter what identity we assume. Let's get the first one from our host on the other side of this desk, Michael Wilbon. Didn't the intern used to do this? Why am I we don't this? have interns anymore. Something or Low nothing, budget. two more home runs last night for Cody Bellinger. Major something. The guy has 21 home runs in his first 51 games. Nobody in baseball has ever had more than that. In June, his slugging percentage is 833. That's and this is the fifth too. time... That he's gone multiple home runs. You know who loves him more than anybody? Who? Clayton Kershaw. Yeah. Talks about him all the time because he gets home runs every time Kershaw pitches. He's getting some run support. This is a very important thing because Clayton Kershaw is the best pitcher in baseball. Yeah, but he's struggling a little okay, bit. Okay, but what I'm saying is he has no time for anybody who he doesn't think is going to be around a long time. This guy's the goods. Well, Belgium, look, I don't know whether he's going to be around for a long time, Tony. It's a huge deal. It is something. I mean, first of all, the Dodgers, you don't hit home runs out of that ballpark easily. They've had two home run champs ever. And Bellinger, who's played like, I don't know, 25 He's games 21 fewer years old. than all the other sluggers, right. is even with them. When you, when you were in a category and, His and first in the NL. and Gehrig and Aaron and Mays haven't no, done it, a big it is something. What's next? Something or nothing. Powell's opt out. This is certainly something. This is the Tom Brady move. This is being cast as Powell Gasol saying, I will take less money 
so that the Spurs can acquire Chris Paul. Because at this point, Chris Paul is the only point guard out there that gets you close enough to say we can compete with, with Golden, Golden State. State. That's right. Now, the problem for Pal Gasol Ooh. is this. He's not Tom Brady. The, the <laughs> Patriots can't win without Tom Brady. The Spurs have five championships without Pal Gasol. Yeah. So there's risk on him. It's something, and it's because of the risk. I mean, you understand why he would be doing this, because the... They don't have to keep him, first of all. They can decide they're going to deal him away if he doesn't take a discounted salary. And, you know, they weren't necessarily all that happy with Paul Gasol's defense at the end of the year or most of the year. And by they, I mean Coach Greg Popovich. So if they get Chris Paul, they can get rid of Gasol. Although you don't think – they seem to be I, I, an honorable group. Yes. Right? And I think you can also use Paul Gasol. Maybe his usage is reduced. But it seems he's important it, to the mix aren't there. Aren't the Spurs the only team that will go 9 and 10 deep on a regular basis so all they the can time. use the group. All the time. Next. Man. But still something. We agree. Something. Yeah. Nothing. McGregor's mural. Um, this is wishful thinking, but it's nothing. He's got this mural out. This doesn't represent anything that has actually happened. It's simply imagined. He's created this mural, and he, he captioned it this, quote, I am a filthy Irish animal. Here's what we know it's about punching McGregor. Mayweather. Here's what we know about him, okay? He can sell a fight. This guy is one of the great self-promoters of all time. That's why Dana White has to keep him around. And here's what we don't know about him. If this is the only punch he's ever going <laughs> to land on Mayweather, and it's in a painting. I presume that was commissioned. We haven't talked yet about the artwork. That's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you like that on the wall in the house you don't use? And, the, and what I'm proposing is the man room? Yeah, in a word, uh, the sport no. room? No, You wouldn't me. want that? No, that's that's no. great looking. That's yeah, no. Come on, commissioned, right? Do we have information on that? You don't think McGregor painted it himself? It's, it's, it's something just because it looks kind of cool. It's nothing. It's better than a fat head it's on his, your wall. It's his mind's eye. It's nothing. His it didn't happen. pretty good. Oh, you it's just, what he thinks is going to happen. What's dismissive. next? Next. Something or nothing. The NHL expansion draft. Yeah, this is to stock the new team, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, and it's a KN, I believe. Las Vegas Golden Knights. Isn't that logo That takes cool? place tomorrow. It looks both medieval yeah. and slightly futuristic. This is tomorrow at 10 a.m. in Vegas. Do you know yeah. what the temperature is going to be in Vegas tomorrow? I think 116. 116 degrees. Nothing says hockey like 116 We're degrees. We're not playing it this late in June. Is it something or nothing? It's something because this is going to be their team, and they're probably going to get Marc-Andre Fleury as the goalie. But if you're going to do this, and first of all, nobody's awake in Vegas nobody's at 10 awake. That, that's nobody's the awake. important thing. Nobody's the ones awake that except are, you. The ones that are You'd awake the only one. are Schwitz and They're like having Airedales that blue plate there, breakfast, and, and that's not important. Uh, this is nothing because there are no stars in it. Sorry to Mark Andre Fleury. He's the only one. I mean, teams were cups. able to protect the people that they know are Fleury's necessary. Got cups. I know, but he's also sort of at the end of the line. Okay. He was replaced. He's been replaced It's an already. entire team that's going to play. How can you say it's nothing? It's got to be something. They don't have a team without it. When the it. team plays, it'll be something, but the expansion draft is nothing. You're not going to watch? No. That's it. Sorry. Let's take one last break. Still to come, Phil Mickelson announces a big change to his game. And... Wayne Wayne appears to have made a decision about next year. Yeah, it's 116 degrees, but it's a dry heat. So you can only bake a chicken. It's better than 98 here? No, it's not. It it's is. 116. I've been there. I've been in close. I've been here. It's, I've been both. Yeah. This is you sinister. You hate it here. At Earth. Pardon the interruption is presented by Guinness Blonde American Lager. Here's to a more refreshing summer. Please drink responsibly. Part of happy hour. Happy time, people. Happy 28th birthday, Terrell Pryor. The former Ohio State quarterback came into the NFL as a quarterback, but after no particular success, Pryor switched to wide receiver, where he's quite good. He signed with the Washington Redskins, and if Kirk Cousins leaves, Pryor could end up throwing the ball to himself. It's a great he was. He had 1,000 receiving yards and four touchdowns with no quarterback that either one of us can remember. That's pretty good for last year's Cleveland Browns. Is he going to be great here? Yeah, well, I don't know about great, but I think pretty good. Yeah. And he's big. He's big. Big, strong, Happy fast, anniversary, fast. Barry Bonds. On this day, 16 years ago, you hit your 38th home run of the season. That's right, it's 38th. It set the record for homers before the All-Star break, and Bonds did it with 17 games to go. Bonds ended that season with the all-time record of 73 home runs, which is discounted by most people who yeah. assume Barry Bonds is a drug chief. Okay, here's who my home run champion is after all these years. Henry Aaron. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, bad yeah. Henry Aaron. Yeah. Sure. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Happy trails to Bones and Phil. After caddying for Phil Mickelson for 25 years, Jim Bones Mackay is off the bag. 
Both the player and the caddy expressed admiration for each other, and Bones went so far as to say, quote, his game is still at an elite level, and when he wins in the future, definitely the Masters, I will be among the first to congratulate him, unquote. Will Bond, this makes you and I the longest married couple in sports. But neither one of us can play like Bones. Play like Bones, probably like a three or four handicap. Tony, I've, I've played with him. I've been around him a little bit. He's the nicest man in the world. And, yes. and, and, and I understand why they'd have to party. He's got to go work. You can caddy for, what, 10, 12 more years, Bones can? He's around 50? It's possible that Phil will taper his schedule. schedule yeah. It's possible, and, and Bones will end up with somebody And that great. guy will be so lucky to get Bones McKay on his back. But it's so nice how they speak of each other, yes, which is, is good. One omission, Josh Jackson did not work out for the Celtics today, wow. and they still haven't seen him in That's person. That's crazy. Chad Ford pins it on a disagreement between Jackson's agent and the team. Do you want to put the word egomaniac agent in Shouldn't there by that. some chance? Shouldn't do that. I mean, he wants to go to Celtics, doesn't he? The Celtics appear to want him in the number three pick Absolutely. overall. All right, we go to the big finish. Let's do it. Tiger Woods is seeking professional help for issues with medications. Your thoughts? I hope he gets it. That's the only thought I have. Needs it. I hope the Tiger gets yes. whatever he needs. The PGA Tour will start blood testing for doping and announce any drug suspensions. Big deal? They used to cover this. They've never announced drug suspensions. If they have transparency, I think it is a big deal. Yes, Dwayne Wade reportedly leaning toward picking up his $24 million option with the Bulls for next season. Smart move? It's a lot smarter than saying no to $24 million. Yes, Who's going to do that? Nobody. Due to a partnership with Gatorade, the D-League will now be known as the G-League. You like that? It's selling out for sponsorship. On this show, they'll still be the D-League. The D-League here. the D-grade in school, we know what that means. Last one, Yankees have lost six straight. Do you like them to turn it around tonight? Yeah. Pineda at home against the Angels. I do like the Yanks to break that losing streak. We're out of time. We're trying to do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the PTI podcast on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. Bristol, get ready. Uh-oh. Not with this hair. Uh-oh. PTI.